Hey, hey, Blue Tail fans! Welcome to my workstation. I got in a... I got in some models on a trade. I have a great trade-in program where people can send me old, dusty old models and I'll give them a credit and that oftentimes will take the edge off getting a project painted. I have a lot of clients that do it. I put them on my web store or I just put them in a bin until I'm ready to do something with them. In any case, this trade had some of these Games Workshop Crypt Horrors in them and these aren't very good in Age of Sigmar right now is what I've heard. And they come on, they used to come on square 40 millimeter bases for Warhammer. And now they put them on 50 millimeter rounds, which is really, I mean, this model is just swimming on this base. It is way too big. And too much stuff, to, like texture and rocks and things. So uh, I took those 50 millimeters, I set them aside for another project. I brought out these extra uh, 40 millimeter rounds that I have, and these are uh, uh, round lip bases, like for War Machine. They're made by a different company though, and they're inset. They have almost an eighth of an inch indentation on them. And what I'm doing is I'm clipping out these pieces from this mausoleum. Uh, these are a few extras left over from that Soul Blight Gravelord's army that we saw recently. And I just clipped out edge pieces of them for these really cool cobblestone things and I'm going to glue them right on in the middle. And of course, since they're square and the base is round, I end up with little edge parts that uh, need to be filled. That I'm going to fill them with texture and also with tiny little piece of pieces of cobblestone that I, that I clipped out. There we go. That fits nicely. And then of course, I'm going to mount the models on them. I really love Zappagap brand super glue. It's really good. It has this great applicator on it. it makes me happy inside my heart. And uh, hmm, what else to say? These are gonna look good. I'll just paint them up in my spare time. Uh, I yeah, I get spare time for myself too. So sometimes I'll stay up late and paint some extra models. Uh, right now. Uh, blue table painting is mostly caught up with projects and things are uh, for the most part things are getting along in a really nice time frame that makes me happy it makes me wake up feeling relaxed in the morning because that's that's like one of my absolute top things that I am worried about is getting my projects done and of course people want to play with their with their models and that makes perfect sense to me. So I'm putting some glue in the edges here. I'm moving it around with a paper clip. I keep a bunch of those on hand and now I'm going to dip it into my texture. I have a little spoon in there in case I have to spoon the texture on. Not always but nice. All right so there you go. So now I have some texture in there. Just going to do it really quick on the other models. Sometimes I like to count the seconds off. I'm now at 10 seconds in this process. It'll probably take me 30 seconds all told to get these done. And uh, yeah, for if you're a professional painter, I definitely recommend keeping track of your time. Make sure that you are working in a sustainable fashion. It doesn't do anybody any good if you make three dollars an hour and then end up having to quit. So I'll just run them in the sand. I keep a spare brush around for second for trade-in models. Uh, they're often literally dusty so I have to dust them off. Uh, looks like a little piece came off of one of them. I'll have to get that sorted out. Or just clip it off and make sure it's smooth if there's if it doesn't really matter. Like uh, like there's a bone spike coming off somewhere. Hmm, maybe that's a separate piece. Interesting. All right. So yeah, now I'm going to glue these on. So if you're gluing something on with like a foot, 
I found a really good way is first to dry fit it and figure out where you want those feet. Okay, that's perfect. So now I can see where I'm going to put them. Yep. So I put a little bit of catalyst onto the base. And then on a pallet, usually a pallet, this time I'm just going to use this other base, you put a little blob of super glue and you dip those feet into it and you're careful not to get it over the edge of the top. And then, so the catalyst is only for one foot. The other foot dries naturally. I just set it on there and that did not work. I didn't put on enough catalyst. All right, I'm just going to have to hold it in place and put the catalyst. So in this catalyst bottle, there's only like an eighth of an inch of catalyst in there. And that keeps it from spilling everywhere in case you knock it over. Uh, there you go. So now it took like that. And I have a little bit of dust on the edges. I don't want that to be there when I'm priming it. So I'm going to go ahead and just swiff it off like that. Very nice. Okay, so next one, step one. I'll just do a little dry fit and make sure I know where I want those legs to go. Ooh, this guy has a very broad stance. Ooh, really broad. I'm going to just see if I can't squeeze those legs in gently, just a tad. There we go. That's perfect. That little sixteenth of an inch is all we needed. Alright, so, so basically you don't try and directly apply things. You use intermediaries like um, a toothpick or a paper clip, something like that. I'm going to set this guy on. Hopefully he'll take. Hopefully I put on enough catalyst which I definitely did not. Oh boy, I am setting a very bad example for how to do things. So we'll just put super glue on there. And then we'll go in from the edge with our catalyst. It has this little applicator. This is the straw. So some people spray it out with this sprayer. God, that is, folks, that's too much. It's too much catalyst. You're spraying this catalyst everywhere. And uh, everywhere, I got the accent on the wrong syllable. All right, last one. Ooh, this guy has like a foot with stuff on it. So we want to set that off to the side. Or maybe clip it out. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, it's going to need to be clipped a little bit to fit in there. There we go. Test it. Mm. I don't know. I don't know how that feels. Flip it a little bit more. There we go. I think we can get it. I think we can get it with that. Yep. Yeah. I'm just going to let the super glue do its work and I'm going to apply it directly because I want quite a bit on there. Yeah, this was, it was, this had a lot of complications to it. But it did stick. Ta da! What up? Get rid of this. Get my knife out of the way, put that back. And you notice I have a piece of cardstock on here that prevents my work area from getting banged up over the years of using that. And there you go, I have three crypt whores ready to go. And you know what? I'm just gonna go ahead and texture this gyrocopter base while I'm at it. Put super glue on there. And you notice I'm twisting, I'm turning the base, rather. Yeah, I think that's enough. So I use a paper clip. Uh, a toothpick works too. And I'm going to, oh no, but I didn't put on enough super glue. And this already has decorations on it, but I'm gonna go ahead and just grab a little piece of corking that I have pre-done. Because you guys know I'm a fan of good corking. Don't come around here with any of that bad corking. I don't want to hear it. There we go. All right.
Yep, I'll just put that little extra piece of corking on there. I'll run it through my texture bin. There we go. And that is good stuff. Very nice. Great. Tap that out. And you know, I'm just going to put this gyrocopter right on there. Going to give it a little dry fit. Ooh, nice. That actually fits with, that actually stays without any sort of glue at all. Good job, Games Workshop. Okay, I, I like this gyrocopter. I have a whole bin of dwarfs, a lot of them Games Workshop, for my fantasy role-playing stuff, so I'm just going to go ahead and add this to that. It'll be fun. All right, thanks for tuning in, and I hope you got some useful information for the day.